So I have a brief introduction and then I want to give the rest of the time to our special guest. Uh, he will uh, shortly give you the details about the movie, the film, The Cut, which, for which he co-wrote the screenplay. And uh, I must also add that in Armenia, along with him, were several members of, of, of the cast and the, uh, the Turkish German producer, Fatih Akin. Uh, and the film, uh, the real premiere of the movie was initially in Venice at the Venice International Film Festival uh, a few months ago, in 2014. Uh, Mr. Martin is in the elite group of screenwriters in the Writers Guild of America's list of 101 greatest screenplays ever written. He immigrated to the United States from Iraq to attend New York University. He won the Mahler Award and graduated with a master's degree in screenwriting in 1968 then went on to teach at NYU from 1968 to 73. Mr. Mark moved to Hollywood after Mean Streets, which he co-wrote with Martin Scorsese, became a huge success. He has written screenplays like New York, New York in 1977, Valentino also in 77, Revenge is My Destiny, and collaborating with Scorsese on multiple projects before writing The Raging Bull in 1980. Among his documentaries are Italian American, 1974, American Boy, 1978, and The Last Waltz, also in 78. His more recent project is a documentary about, about his own life and background, Marty, it's called Marty, From Baghdad to Hollywood, which was released in 2011. Mr. Martin is very, still very active. He teaches at the prestigious USC School of Cinematic Arts, having mentored and taught thousands of brightest young luminaries in the movie industry. Thank you very much. All right, I'll talk in English. Well, um, I have to say something about the cut, the movie, the cut, I suppose. It's important to me that it's going to be released and the American premiere will be at the Tribeca Film Festival April 18th. Uh, 100th anniversary of the genocide will be hopefully uh, people will see it, understand what, what we were going through. Uh, it took me a long time to get the story right, meaning for years I've been trying to write my own story, which was difficult because the money was always hard to come to put uh, what, $27 million to make a movie. But Fatih Akin, although he was Turkish, he was very big into telling the story of what happened. And he told me that, he sent me email after email to convince me that I would be the right person. <laughs> uh, I, I want everything to be right. So um, anyway, he thought that was convincing me that he is the right person to do this project about the genocide. In fact, he had uh, written several stories and he wanted me to see if I could revise it and to make it better. And over a period of six months, I went to Germany. So we finally decided uh, what the script should be about. You worked on a script like you would a baby. You know, it gets born and it could die very easily, but the main thing is to keep at it until you get what you want. And I'm not sure if we got what we wanted, but it is at least uh, the first feature film on the jealous side directly about that I know of. And I'm hopeful that some young person in the future will do a better one. Um, We'll see what happens. I uh, want to make sure, I always like to encourage young people, especially Armenians, uh, uh, young Armenians to kind of get into telling stories and hopefully their own stories or their father's story at USC, which is I think the best school for film uh, in the country, in the world. And, um, but other than that, I think you should see the movie before we talk again. Uh, it's kind of hard to talk 
to people who haven't seen the movie. It's just about a man looking uh, to survive after his entire family is wiped out, like most of the Armenians in that area. And he is looking to save himself first and winds up not being able to talk because his throat is partially cut. And then uh, he finds out his twin daughters are alive somewhere in between 1915 and 1923. He's looking for them. He searches all over the world. And that was the expensive part of the production because it was shot in North Dakota and <coughs> Cuba, uh, Jordan, a lot of places. You had to move the actors and you know, tell the story from that point of view. Anyway, I'm not going to tell you whether he finds his daughters or not, but it's a quite an adventure for, I think, most Armenians of that generation who are no longer with us would know intimately. I've tried to put myself in their places and in the way they were act under the circumstances of complete helplessness in getting themselves killed under the circumstances. You hopefully know all the story, and if you don't, it's time to catch up to it. Um, it's not just a movie I'm talking about, about you know, spreading your word, so to speak. Uh, I'm always <coughs> puzzled by the lack of political impetus into the Congress and uh, state senators or senators, you know, except for Duke Mangian, who by accident won the governorship a few years ago. Uh, I don't see any politicians coming up, young politicians, especially from this area. There are enough Armenians. You know, all you need is five to 10 percent of the population of, the, let's say, Glendale which is now more than that in Armenians. And they should really have a, at least a congressman you know, from this area. And all you need is a few people who will put a few dollars and lots of time and get us a couple of congressmen to represent it. Because there's nothing more powerful than being a congressman or a senator uh, in the US. And, you, and if he's up there or she's up there, they can do anything they want uh, worldwide. And I don't want to bring the Jews into the thing, but about 20% of the politicians in the country are Jewish. Now, that means nothing to you, but to Israel, it means survival in a way. So. If they can do it, we can do this to my point. And there should be some young people interested in politics. I don't know, I'm talking about something different, but it's not. It's the same subject, survival, okay? Now, I think I have enough said. Let me start with some questions, because that I can do right away, that I can answer. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, let me start the conclusion of the cut was entered at the Council Festival in competition. I, I hear at and first, we drew. Why was it withdrawn? Uh, because truthfully, I don't know. You know, that, that's what they call calm politics. Something happened between the director and the man who ran uh, the festival. Uh, I think he was a little bit surprised that it was in English. You know, French don't like anything in English, if possible. The whole world was speaking uh, French. But his second choice was, why not in Armenian? It's about Armenian, which is kind of, I don't know, I felt like it. Uh, if it was in Armenian, who would see it as much as would if it was in English? That was my fault. Anyway, that was the answer, I think. So he got mad, father did, and said, well, we're, there are other places we could go. Now it's in the uh, Tribeca Folk Festival, which I think is big in New York. It is in New York. 
So, and after that, it's going to be released around here. Uh, so we're talking end of April, beginning of May. But it was shown in Venice, right? Venice Oh yeah, Venice is uh, uh, competition. Yeah, in Armenian Pomegranate <coughs> Festival, or what is it called? Uh, Africa. Okay, next one. But something has to be done. And, you know, I was reading in today's Times, LA Times, and there was an article by someone who wrote about what happened at the end of uh, World War I. And it's amazing how all the stars were aligned against Armenia. First, the Russians lose their government that was there into communism, which was going into the opposite direction of where the Armenian interests were. Then the worst of it was uh, President Wilson had a stroke. And his stroke made him incapacity, couldn't deal with it. And his wife was running things at the White House uh, after World War II. Now, my feeling is if it was like Teddy President Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt was really, he would have carved out part of southern Turkey, northern uh, Syria for Armenians. I, I'm positive of that. Because all the other countries in those days divided pieces, except the United States, because they chickened out. They pulled their troops and left, and they knew about the genocide. And, uh, couldn't, uh, he was sitting uh, stroke-wise, not knowing what the hell was going on. So that was real bad luck, you know. I, I see a future here if we could get the Americans in, in Armenians again, you know. We need a president that understand. President, uh, Senator Dole was very much into, Ar I don't know if you know, but he passed away, so. What can I tell you? He's still alive. He is? Oh, great. <laughs> but he's retired, I think. Seven, all the way in the background. <laughs> Thank you. But there are uh, very few people actually uh, are looking out for Armenians. And that's really the power in this world is in Washington. Now, if you want anything done anywhere in the world, you have to have some words in uh, the Senate, the Congress. So the government I made is who runs Washington? Say it again. Who runs Washington? Let's not get into that. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to, I'm not talking about that. I'm yeah. talking about the Armenians and what they have to do. Yeah, that's all. And I don't want to get into politics. No. Okay. Okay. Could you what? talk louder, please? What do you think about recent movies about genocide and uh, uh, Kirk Korea's plan about Armenian genocide movie? How do we can apply to that? I don't think I understood. Do you? He, he says, what do you think about the recent movies, a lot of movies coming out now on genocide, and also there was an announcement. Which genocide? Armenian, Armenian genocide. Oh, I, I didn't know that. And he also says, what do you think about Kirk Korea? There was an announcement Kirk Korea is making a movie on the Armenian genocide. Oh, movie. well. Maybe the cut made him wake up for five, five minutes. But uh, he could do it, he certainly had the money. And now he needs, uh, it's not so easy to make a movie about anything, you know. It's not just money, you gotta have talent, you gotta have storytelling. And he, I hope he picks the right. I don't know what other movies are coming up about the genocide, but Whatever it is, I hope it's good. Let's say even better than the card. What else can I say? What do you think? <laughs> Where are you? How do you can have right to that? Uh... You, you, want, you want to say something about Krikorian, man? Okay, well, Mr. Krikorian, you know, there's been a lot of articles. Some are true, some are false, but basically, just in summary, uh, Mr. Krikorian for many years had planned to make a movie on the Armenian genocide. For, a, many, for 20 years, he focused on 40 Days of Musada. Uh -huh. And if, even before him, for the old MGM, you know, you know the story, I don't want to go into it. It's a whole lecture. Uh -huh. the, the MGM was going to make the movie in 1930s, 40s, and 
Turkish pressure, State Department, they canceled it. Anyway, when Kirk bought uh, MGM, he wanted to make the movie, and he looked into it. MGM was uh, studios were losing money initially, so they didn't want to take the financial risk. Then, uh, they, when it became successful, the studio was sold for five million dollars right away. But Kirkran kept his interest outside of the studio, and uh, in recent years, he has uh, brought a team together. So they they have a script. Uh, they're getting producer actors together, and uh, it's supposed to be shooting the film this summer. So that's all I can say right now. Well, well, thanks for bringing that up. I had no idea that there were so many films coming out. It can't, can't hurt, let's put that way. I'm, I'm not afraid of other movies. In fact, I'm glad. I wish it would be as much of, about the Jewish genocide, the same amount where you can't turn without seeing a movie about the Jewish genocide, you know. So I feel we should have our own card. Yeah. But uh, any other question? Anybody else? Anything about anything? Yes. Can you talk more about uh, the research you did for this movie, like either personal experience or interviews or first-hand sources? Thank you, Bob. Uh, my uh, feeling is all my life I've been following. Uh, what's happening to the Armenians, since I was one of them. And uh, also because I saw how timid. It's not for uh, nothing that it's called the cut. You know why? What it's called the cut is the removal of Armenia from Anatolia. That's what it symbolizes. It also symbolizes the voice, which is no longer, seems to be silent, mostly. And very few voices are heard about this horrible genocide that's 100 years old now, exactly. And it's also, uh, that, does that make answer your question? But me personally, I feel like it's so e easy to talk about it, but it's so hard to do. And how do you show what <coughs> happened, but at the same time make sure that you don't get buried with uh, bad reviews and uh, cut your short your career kind of situation. I always, I didn't, no, I don't care. I don't give a shit what not, you know. I just want to make sure my stories go right where it goes. And that's it, I don't have to worry about anything now. But when you're younger, you have to follow whatever puts on your table and you eat it or you walk out. And uh, anymore. Yes. Sir. You mentioned that the story that you wrote uh, is about a man looking for his twin sister, sorry, his, uh, twin son, daughter. Two daughters. Two daughters. Two daughters, yeah. Two daughters. Two daughters. Yeah. Is, is it is it more of a documentary that you that this movie is about or Well if you can't do a documentary about people who've been there a hundred years. A documentary means shooting people as they are now. Uh, so if you're talking about the style, uh, it might be partially that way, but it isn't. It's pure, basic, epic storytelling. Uh, and a, a documentary would be if I go with a camera right now and, and interview people who have survived those, or, or whose parents have survived, and who have some uh, memory of <coughs> events that happened then. We should really get those uh, documented, put, uh, the, the Jewish, have the Shoah project uh, started by Spiel, uh, Spielberg, and uh, in it he has conversations, not him, but his people, have conversation with survivors of the Holocaust. And there are thousands and thousands of voices. I don't know if the Armenians have or want or can. They're part of Shaw now. You yeah, I heard that, but I have to see it to believe what they for, for Since you're at USC, you for four hundred of them are part of the Shoah. Uh, That's what culture. I heard. I heard that. But they're coming out in the end of April. All right, that would be great if that's possible. 
See, I've been waiting for that. And I've been waiting for all of you to do uh, interviews about your families. Most of you here, obviously, are survivors of the genocide. And one of the depressing things is the lack of children in this church. And, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I wish I had seven, you know, but can't do it. Go, can't go back. Go have children. That's can't hurt you. <laughs> Believe me. Can't. Maybe some of us are at home trying to make children. I hope so. <laughs> you know, they have mechanical people coming out these days. Why not? <laughs> okay, any other questions? Any, yes, sir. When was the movie made? Uh, in which country was the movie? Excuse me. I can't hear. So which country was the movie made? Uh, in which location? I, uh, I thought that's uh, all right. I'll, I'll start by saying uh, Jordan, uh, Cuba, North Dakota. What else? did I miss? I think not. No, no, Minnesota. Minnesota, yeah. Uh, but not in Armenia. Yes, no, not in Armenia. Not in Armenia. No, 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 not in Armenia. I think there was a little bit in. Uh, Greece, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, oh, Germany, of course. <laughs> it was Germany. Yeah, we had most of it, a lot of the indoor scenes were shot in uh, Berlin and Hamburg. Yes, lady here. How much did it cost to produce this movie? 27 million. And did you have to go around asking for money or who? Well, unfortunately, only a few people were involved, and two of them have passed away since they gave the okay, which is apparently a sad thing for a man. They keep passing on. And, and anyway, uh, I'd say most of the money came from government subsidy. That's an odd thing, you know. From all over the European country, France put a lot of money, Germany put money. Uh, I think even Turkish government put money, but they don't know it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they know it. They got it from Gephardt or maybe in the... I don't know how, how much his partner was Turkish. They figured it's a Turkish talent, so... But anyway, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I want to... Uh, was there a moment during the process of the filmmaking, was there a moment you, you was thinking that I wish the director was not Turkish or no, was from no, no, no. I think and how I thought with him, like, during yeah. this, uh, for this Well I wish it was Armenians of course, but that's not what was there in front of me. I saw someone Turkish who was speaking for the Armenian. That's what I saw. And I thought that would make it more acceptable for people you see. If an Armenian was doing it as oh yeah yeah a lot of guy like that. This way, I think you, it feels like there's a balance between what happened and what's happening now. You see that? Yeah, I think it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry, you already asked one question. There's another. We'll, we'll come back to you. Uh, no, in the back. Yeah. How did the director transform by the time he contacted you and by the time you wrote the screenplay? Uh, how did he? How did he? How, how did he? He feelings towards the genocide. Well, he was. I don't know exactly. I <clears throat> didn't sit down and talk to him about the politics of it. No, I don't mean by the politics of it. But when you mentioned that he contacted you by email. Oh, oh, and God, then yeah. His understanding of the impact of the genocide and after and during the time that you wrote the screenplay, how did that impact him? Okay, I, I think I understand your question. But uh, I don't know how to answer it because it's a subtle thing that happened. I, I tell you, at the first six months, no, first three months of the email, which he said himself and also to his producer, who was Kurdish uh, lady from Germany, and uh, Nurhan. What happened was that uh, between uh, Fatih and me, we never talked about what it means, what it is. We told a story, you know, the story about a man who has to run for his life and lose his daughter. Always the story was, I felt it was better to talk, tell a story and inside was the information that you wanted. 
he didn't change. He's still the same person that uh, was before or after. He had no hard feelings. What was his motivation for this movie? What was it? Motivated? Believe it or not, he just wanted to tell a good story. And he wanted, uh, he was friends with Ron Dink, the person who was killed in uh, Istanbul. And that led him to me. Because I, I met Ron's daughter and all that. So it was, uh, I think it, a lot of it was a labor of love more than anything else. Yeah, what are we going to say? You were going to ask the question. Right here, oh. have, have you had any reaction from Turkey uh, about the movie? Me, and, no. I, I, and then while you were making the movie, have you had any like difficulties or any, any no, threats? No, or no. I wish I could say there was a lot of hoopla. I think their uh, effect right now is to do, leave it alone. Ignorance. Keep it in the, you know, like it doesn't. What? What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Which is fine with me, you know, but we gotta build it up here. I mean, America is the country that we need to push uh, the story. Anyway. Let me just add something. Sure. The, when the movie was completed, there were a lot of uh, death threats against the Turkish producer in Turkey, and the government was very upset that you know, someone like this very prominent producer, this isn't his first movie, he makes very Cutting edge, but I'm direct. Not so sorry, I'm sorry, director, yeah. Fatih Akin. And, and so, as you know, the media in Turkey is controlled by the government, and a lot of the journalists are in jail, they don't follow the Erdogan's the, the dictate. So, there are a lot of, uh, on purpose, bad reviews were written against the movie. That's true. To discourage uh, the Turks from going. But it would play in Turkish theaters, a lot of Turks saw it, so that was a very positive thing. I think back there there's a question. Yeah. Yes, sir. Are there talented movie makers in the making, in the pipeline? Should we expect Armenian movie makers? Oh, Armenian. Frankly, we I have an experience with I have your students, students, for instance. Do you have students at USU or Armenian? No, I know that. I, I've said very few. I'm sure there are, but, you know, I don't know. I'm so about to say, semi-retired. I don't see every student that comes out of the woodwork. But I, uh, let's hope there are. And if there is any, I always encourage it. But subtly, not, you can't make a big deal about it. Otherwise, you know. I, 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 yeah. I have a question about Schindler's List. Wasn't the screenplay uh, written by an Armenian from Fresno? Yeah, yes. I, I think huh? so, yes. yeah. Was his name ever mentioned? Was Armenian Jazz ever mentioned? Everybody talked about it. All the Armenians cursed him because he didn't get up and say anything about it, I said. Right. Uh, but I don't know what the politics were. Maybe he was told not to say Maybe he was told, I have no idea. I, don't quote me, because I don't know. <laughs> I, I honestly <laughs> don't know what the story was. Okay, somebody back there. Yes, sir. Back there. Go ahead, loudly. Uh, yeah, in 2002, the film uh, Ara by Alto Meloyan, yeah, that's a lot of movies. Do you feel like it made a big impact or maybe something? No, that was not a good movie. <laughs> you have to make a good movie to, to boot. You know, can't just say and mention something and expect it to be uh, great, especially the audience. The audience is tough. And uh, look, there, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, excuse me, there are only two reasons why people go. Two movies. One is to be entertained. The other one is to agree with whatever is already on the screen. Now, <laughs> so you can't have movies where you lecture people. Who's going to pay ten dollars to listen to a lecture? You know, they want entertainment, or they want to be told a story. You follow? That's what why get they give ten bucks or twelve bucks to see a movie. So they don't want to go out there and have some. A lot of people have criticized uh, the cut because it's not sharp enough. The, 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 the it doesn't show all the horror and atrocities. And blah, blah, blah. I thought that would be too much. Uh, then it becomes a lecture, you see, and then you would lose more than you gain. So I thought 
telling the story was by itself, without any lecture, was the best mode. And there was a question here. Somebody? How did oh. you want to say something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question about the, the meaning translation of the word cut. It's a speed. When we try to prepare the flyer, there you was know, a question why is the speed? Speed translation is not exactly as a cut. It's a scar. So, a scar. Scar, yeah. scar, yeah. He gets so cut to the neck some, and he catches it. Some people suggested to put like there or some other. I don't know what that means. Yeah, yeah. 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 I told you. I said that. that, 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 that. What idea? I, I mean, <laughs> no, I just finished saying about subtlety in telling a story. I don't want to get into analyzing. There, you know, there are some students at USC who are take the what they call thesis classes. What do they call them? They analyze movies, and that's all they do. They talk about movies. They talk for hours about what it means to be Charlie Chaplin and have a cane. You know, nonsense like that. Who cares? Now I don't want you to start making. Judgments on the cut, you know, how many ways you could go with it. It's a title of a movie. Look at it that way, you might enjoy it more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Could you stand up? Thanks. Uh, is it true that uh, there's another film about the Sandcastle Girls? Uh, the book Sandcastle Girls will be made into a film. Is that true? I've heard of that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. The the movie the, the script is written. They're getting ready to shoot. They raise the money for it. It's multi million dollar movie. Also, it's Chris Bojalian's you know best selling novel. Turned to it's going to be film shorted. Yes. Well, I hope there are many more. That, that's all I'm going to say. I am semi retired, as I said earlier. So I'm not. I used to read everything about any movie coming up. I don't anymore. Because uh, I have better things to do with my time right now. <laughs> <laughs> Namely, doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, you said that all your life you had wanted to write uh, an Armenian theme story. Yes, that's true. So is this done? Is this it? Or you have another one? Because this was well, not yours, basically. I this think I already I answered think. that question, but I'll, I'll answer it again. I'll say it one more time. I don't think so. This is it, huh? Frankly, no. Uh, I want to be honest. I could say a lot. Of I got people offering me a lot of money to do a lot of movies. In fact, as I was leaving, Zalin picked me up. Who was in my apartment but Henry Fonda's son? And he was there to do a book. So what I did was I, I said, I'm not available, but my assistant is. Cody, you know, you met him. And so they talked business. And I left. I came here. I could have taken the money and stayed there, but <laughs> uh, you don't take money on those sort of stuff. Anyway, anybody yeah. else? Please. If we're done. Okay. One more? Okay, one last question. Last question. First of all, thank you. I would like to know if your personal life, your family is a survival of uh, genocide and where they come from. Mm, good question which unfortunately my sister can answer better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I left, I left Baghdad and my family when, when I was very young. I came to New York University. And before that, I was, they kept everything away from me. Yes. I didn't hear any lectures or anything. His grandfather. The only, huh? Your grandfather from your mom's son. Bedai. Bedai. Who Your mom's he? dad. Oh, yeah, Which, apparently, but that was way before my yeah. yeah. He's asking the same questions. Huh? I don't know. There are, my mom's father was killed. Yeah, his dad. And that, that's it. Sister, sister will come forward and no, say, no, no, no. <laughs> yes, I'm not this. <laughs> Can you sing it for us? What is it? Sing. Please sing for us.
One, one last question. What's your what's your personal view? Your personal view towards uh, Armenian survival in diaspora. What do you think? I just said it. I no, no. Like yera khaner satana. Ayo yera khaner yev Congress politics. That's that's there is no other way. You gotta get over uh, some stick in the Congress and the president if you can. It'd be great. Uh, and that will change the, everything. Uh, right now, Armenia is in terrible trouble. You don't want to talk about it, but they're surrounded by enemies, you know? And worse than that, they're all leaving the country. Armenia is losing people. Uh, all these Turks and Kurds and Persians are having seven, eight kids, a family, more. And Armenia is left. You know, especially in Armenia. Am I right? She was 100 percent. Okay, last question. Over. In a serious hard sum check, who say you said what? He could violate. I can bargain. Or if machine, if the Danish machine, I can guard the support. Yes, I must. Who say yes? Sharuna gave you the right to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a great honor. Okay.